Well, we're back again. Episode five, don't take no jive. As you have said before, I'm going to say it again. Two ears, one mouth. Make sure you listen to low, just in case you want to know. Boy, we got a good one going, going down today, and I'm so excited for one of my friends going to come on today. But before we get into that, I always got to give that motivational quote. The harder the battle, sweeter the victory. No victory is done without a battle. You don't go through the journey without a battle. You don't become successful without a battle. So we have to battle everything in life. As a husband, as a father, as a coach, as a leader, even as a principal as a, or even the president of the United States, there's a battle to be the best. There's a battle to win a victory. It's just like going to war, right? Somebody going to win, somebody going to lose. And this process that we're going to talk about today with the recruiting process and the coach relationship with a player process, even a coach with a trainer process, all of that required to be a battle before it becomes a victory. I went through a lot of battles in my life. I'm talking about from childhood all the way to high school, all the way to college, back home to start my family, to start working. And I'm not just talking about working in a, a very uh, corporation or big time job. No, I'm talking about working in the fields. I'm talking about working in the orange grove, picking oranges, picking cucumbers, shucking parsley, taking out the yellow little leaves so you can put them in the store to put them on their food when they go to the restaurant. That was a battle for us because we knew that if we didn't take care of business in that battlefield or in the orange grove field or the cucumbers or the corn and shucking the corn, there was no reward. There was no victory at the end. So when they told me, get out there, get it done, go battle it, go battle the sun, get them at 5 o'clock in the morning, and leave them at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Make sure you outdo everyone out there so make sure your mom can leave here with the most tickets because you get a ticket, you get 50 cents. You get a ticket, you might get a dollar. But know what? I made sure when I got them ticket that I won the battle, and the victory was to make sure when we get home, the food was able to be on the table. The rent was able to be paid. The car payment was able to be paid. And all of a sudden done, it came down to the mama and the kids. And that's what I mean by a hard victory. I mean a hard battle. And that's what I mean by the victory. It's the key. And you know what? I have someone that's coming online right now that went through a lot of battles. After talking to him years and years and years, a lot of battle he went through. But the battle for him it was to make sure that every young man that he come encounter with, every young man that he have a relationship with, every young man he offered football scholarship understood that this is not going to be easy, that it's going to be a battle to get where you want to get. And everybody want to get to the promised land of being a national champion and finish a college degree to go to the NFL. I'm about to bring on my guest speaker for this week, episode five. You on Sweet Fried Production. You are on the Listen to Low Show. Coming up right quick is my man, my friend, my friend, my partner, my buddy, the cornerback coach for Ball State, Daryl Perkins. How you doing, Coach Daryl? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be on here with you today. So I like the energy you brought. So I which I, I knew that I knew that was going to be the case getting started. So great to be here. Yeah. Well, I know that energy was there when I first met you. I never forget. I, it's it's I go way back to, I was trying to start at 2000 and maybe nine or 10. And when I first met you, you came through and I had my son low. And I was doing a recruiting for my son low. And, 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 and I'm trying to remember back then, were you, was it UConn back then or where you were before UConn coach? That was no. That was the very first stop where we met. I was at, I was at UConn, and that was in 2010. Yep, there it is. Got it right. Isn't that amazing? How you we have? I can remember that because we kept in touch since 2010. Here it is, 2024. 14 years later, we still friends, still talk. You still in the same grind, same battle, trying to help the young men be successful, and I'm doing the same thing. Right. We didn't lose touch no matter what. Right, coach. We've never lost touch. So, I mean, immediately, like I say, we it's like we had a it was a match made in heaven. We started a friendship then and we just kept we just kept going. Our love for the game, our love to help these kids, our love to to see them reach their goals and dreams. That's that's what gets us up and drives us every day. So 
of course, we're going to stay connected. Exactly. And it's so, it was even better than that. I remember I had a camp. I do this camp called Battle in the Pit. And we've been doing it now about four or five years. This might be our fifth year, but on books, it's, it's, it's the fourth year. But we did a year. We didn't call it Battle in the Pit. And you had a, you were home. You were down here visiting. I on vacation you know, with your wife, right? And you had little, little Spencer, right? You got your son, Spencer. And um, I had an opportunity to meet Spencer, uh, meet your wife, and and build a relationship with with Spencer more than anything, you know, because you know a lot of people don't let their let people get around their kids too much unless they feel comfortable with them. You allowed me to be a friend or a coach to Spencer. Came out to the Battle of the Pit three, I want to say it was, <laughs> and you even helped volunteer your time while you was out there with Spencer. How that spends with you? Being out there at the Battle Pit Three with me and your son Spencer, around all the guys, even some that you recruited. Oh, it was it was a great it was a great experience. One, obviously, to be out there with your son, your son able to as he's gotten older now, he's in seventh grade, he can see you out there in the element working with the kids, and when you're talking about passion and working hard, putting your best foot forward, listening to coaching instructions and giving it everything you got. He got a chance to hear me motivate guys to do that. But then in the same time, turn around and work with him because he's trying to, to do what, what he loves to do. So um, I, I appreciate the, the experience and the opportunity to be able to do that um, with him and also with you. And I tell you, he he's never forgotten you. So your, your number one slogan that he remembers is burn, baby, burn. Woo. And he don't he never <laughs> let me forget that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I remember you to tell me he got one of the shirt with burn, baby, burn on his shirt. He to wear that thing every day, the school, home, bed, everything, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. He still has it. So <laughs> still, I, still he, got it. He probably outgrown that outfit by now. I gotta see him you know, again. It was a little big when you, it was a little big when you gave it to him, but you know, he can still get it on and uh, he still works out in it. So it'll be about, you know, this may be the last cycle, but he loves that. Burn, oh, baby, burn. Baby. <laughs> well, we got to hook him up. Next time y'all come down here, when you come recruit uh, the Central Florida player from Ball State, you know, and it's, it's, you always vacation here too. So I got to hook him up. I do got my battle pit for coming up a five. I, I can't remember which one is so many now. I do so many camps. Now I know I'm the camp king. So <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I got the next one come down, I got to make sure we got uh, Spencer in that. You know, and just it's great to have a relationship with you outside of just recruiting the boys, recruiting the yes, athletes in Central Florida. It's a great to have that relationship. And that makes it better. So when we do, uh, we are talking about my athletes or other athletes in Central Florida, or you asking questions, you know that the answer you're going to get is genuine. The answer is going to be real. would you agree? 100%. That's the only way we do it. You know, you got to – you got to be open. You got to be honest. Somebody, if they're going to take their time to ask you a question, then we need to give honest answers. And that's the only way we do it. Exactly. And I've always been that way there. I just I want to just touch base on one quick story, how the process back then with recruiting, I just going with, I, I have, we had one <laughs> athlete and it's interesting. You know, we still friends. All I got a good relationship with. And I told him, we do going to come on the show. He's like, well, I'm going to be on the show next week to back it on up. So Ellis Martyr. Ellis Martyr, right? Uh, Ellis Martyr, Lake Highland Prep. They had a great season that year. They actually signed almost seven, eight Power Five guys from Lake Highland Prep back then. I don't know if you remember that with the uh, – we'd have Blake from and uh, they had – who went to Vanderbilt. You had Tyler uh, Richards, I think, that went to Illinois. Yeah. Uh, you had some players on that Lake Landon Highland Prep. Landon Johnson. Zach, yes. Yeah. Landon. Yeah, it was some great kids on that team. And we kept pushing for Ellis – you no, know, get get a scholarship, get a scholarship. You know, we felt like that he was he had the height, he had the size, he had the speed. He played cornerback, right? And we already know, and just keeping it real, you no know, white boy playing cornerback. We didn't know, you know, was that going to work? So we think you got to go to safety or do something different. But he was adamant; he wanted to do it. That's his position, and he locked down everybody, right? And he went on all the trips. He went on the tours. He went on the bus tours. He went on. We I remember I remember him, uh, Drico Johnson. Trey Griffin, all of them on the road, going around to all the camp, you know, try, you know, trying to get the offers. And even back then, and I can remember calling you and say, "This is the guy, this is the guy." And you like, you looked at him, you 
come to the camp. We come to the camp. We do well in the camp. Still, we wait on that offer, hoping we can get it, you know, and didn't happen for a while. We kept on doing our thing. He didn't get discouraged. We kept on working hard and working hard. And all of a sudden, out of everyone, out of everything, his only offer from, you know, a big school at UConn came from you, Dow Perkins, because you believe in what I was telling you about the, about the kid. And I told you, he's going to make you look good either classroom, on the <laughs> field, or both, or whatever case might be. Am I, am I, am I, am I saying the right thing here, Daryl? Well, one half, this, this story is 100% accurate. It's, it's right on, right on. Exactly yeah. right. Ellis, Ellis, I tell you, he was everything that you said, like I say, and ended up really even, you know, being more. I mean, he came to the camp and, you know, he came to the camp and he showed out, you know, he showed out, you know, we had to get through the, to the camp cycle. Head coach at that time, there was the great Paul Pasqualoni. And he said, hey, we got to see some more. But when it all shook out, all the names that come through the camp, his name remained at the top. His numbers, um, the speed, the change of direction, and then he had skill, you know. And so, you know, we, 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 we value what we do in the evaluation process, and we trust that. And at the end of the day, Ellis Martyr was on top, not only athletically, but then academically, and then his character, his character and his personal life was in order. So we check, he checked all the boxes mm. and going out. Yeah. And I like what you said too. He checked all the boxes. And I think the athlete now they have to remember that. And parents need to remember your kid have to check all the boxes. What is right. the boxes, Daryl? Give me a box. I, I'm going to, I'm going to give you um, a, a box. You open the box. When you reach in the box, you reaching out what about that athlete? You want to reach in that box and say, yes, he did what? What's in the box there for an athlete to get recruited from a Ball State or whatever school, other school that you was at? Because I know you was at Old Dominion. Uh, you was at, and of course, we talked about UConn. Um, you just at Syracuse. So tell me, what's the box? What are we checking off? Yeah. The first thing that gets your attention, we'll, we, we'll keep it real. The first thing that gets your attention is what he does on the field, mm -hmm. okay? Whatever, what he does on the field. You know, when you turn on the clip, do I really have to watch 20 minutes before I can get excited? Or is he getting me excited in the first four or five clips that are on the highlight? Because he's putting his best out there. So if he's getting excited about it, I should get excited about it. The recruiter should get excited about it. So after you see that, okay, it's okay. Let me slow down here. And now we got to get to those other boxes. So he's got a, the athletic piece. You got to see that. You got to see that for whatever position it is, that the characteristic, the attributes that they're met. So if, for instance, if it's a cornerback, I got to see speed. I got to see quickness. I got to see change of direction. Okay. I, I need to see feet and hips and then ball skills. And then the last piece there, I got to have physicality mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, there's got to be a tackle at the end of the play. So those things there have got to be right. in place. Once we finish there, I go then, I got to start with the academic piece. The mm -hmm. academic piece comes next because you got to go to school. And at the end of the day, I want guys there that want to get their degree because uh, that's what it's all about. We may not go to the NFL. We may not be all conference, but I promise moms and dads, grandmothers and granddads that, hey, if you let him come with me, if you let him come to our university, we're going to see to it that he gets that degree. We're not going to fail you there. We're going to do our part. He's going to get his degree. But right along with that, the young man has to want to get his degree. Mm -hmm. And I knew that we're talking about Ellis Martyr there. I knew education was important to him and his family. So then that there was. So again, depending on the school you go to, hey, I've been at schools there where they don't look at anything unless it's over 3.0. 
You can't right. even get in the door. Right. You can't even get in the door. And then at that time there, the test score, the test score, you got at least minimum, minimum a thousand. Not no eight twenty and eight fifty, minimum a thousand. You gotta you gotta do that. So right there at Ellis Martyr, Lake Highland Prep, the academics, his transcripts, he spoke for himself. He was well above the bar. The next thing there, the character. Mm. I'm going to talk to the high school coach. Tell me about this young man. I When I go to the high school, I, I see the counselor. If there's a janitor around there, I see him. If there's other, uh, you know, if I can get to that English teacher or if I go by the gym and there's another coach in that gym, I'm asking everybody, tell me about this young man. And if they're telling me that he has a good attitude, that he's, treating other students right he's treating other adults right i know i'm getting a good person also when i see that young man interact with his mom and his dad if i see him talking and treating his mom and dad with respect okay i know i have a good kid i tell you what i have walked away when i've seen a young man disrespect his mom talking you know loud or you know, in a manner he should. And I said, if he's going to do that to his mother, mm-hmm. right. what will he do to me and somebody else on our staff? Right. The right. character piece has got, right. has got to be there. Right. The character piece has got to be there. Um, the next thing there, work ethic. Mm. Work ethic. Right. You know, the coach said this guy is going to come in and work and work every day. And that's who, that's what his DNA is. That's what his makeup is, that he doesn't want to be out work. That's my guy. Because now if you're going to work there, I know you'll work on the field and you'll work in the classroom. You know, because let's face it, every young man that you recruit may not be a straight A student. And that's okay. If a B, if a B average is your best, we're successful. Right. Whatever it might be. If a C plus average is your best, you're successful. Right. Do your best each and every day. Right. So uh those boxes there low the 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 athletic evaluation the academic evaluation the character evaluation the work ethic those things there um have to be there and i will not compromise right. when you find yourself you compromise you'll you'll be sooner than later you're going to have to go get another athlete because in one of those areas, that young man is going to find himself out of that scholarship. He's going to find himself off the team because he didn't check the boxes. Exactly. So I got that magic box. I got that magic box right there. That's that magic box. That box is magical because if I check off all five in that box, I beat the battle. I got the victory. I'm back to the victory now because that victory is worth 200000 to three hundred thousand dollars to go to college. That's, right. that's what it costs. So that's what that's that's the value of that victory. You worked hard for that, right? So it go back to but his and now that there. If I open the box, let's say the box adventure is empty, right? So I got to put stuff in the box. But on the way, you can check off the box. The first thing you have to do is follow what we call a ton, a funnel. We're gonna funnel it down. So number one, film. I'm not film going to get to me before academic get to me because you're not look you're not going online looking at everybody have great academics you going online looking at everybody have great film that's so, right so if people ask the question well why he ain't talking to me my film better than him my film better than him my this and that well no he just ain't got to your film so your film first then once I get the film I see the film okay all the boss to check out. Now I'm going to go check your academic. That's right. Okay. All right. I just checked the academic. Grades are good. We right there. Now, let me check. The, let me let me talk to people about you. Let me see what's going on. Let me see. Let me look at the character. Right? Let me, let me see how you're looking. Let me see how you're moving. Then now I'm going to talk about, I got the parent. How you talk to your parent when I come on that visit? Uh, how you talk to the parent when I pull up in the parking lot and you and your mom leaving out and you yelling at her? You didn't know I was watching because you never know who's watching. Then right. the work at the Excel, when they ask you the question, do you run track? Do you do extra training after work? That work out to go far 
than just working out with your school. Because school only going to give you so much. What you're doing when no one else is watching, right? That's right. So that's some all up in that magic box right there. It's you know, just my thought. Wouldn't you agree? That sums it up. Like I say, that is a recipe for success. And I don't, and over the years, I don't deviate from that. I know better. If I try to say, well, okay, this piece is not in the box, but I'm going to go ahead and go for it. I tell you, I've seen guys do that over the years and it does not work. It does not work. It's too many distractions. It's too many things that the young kids today that they're faced with. And you got to have, you got to have everything in that box. So that's what keeps you grounded. Because when there's, when there's everything, when I see a young man has taken the time to make sure that things are in that, in that box, he's listened to mom and dad. He's listened to trainers. He's listened to coaches. Then that tells me that he's invested in himself. Okay. And that he's got goals and that he's going to be focused and motivated to attain those goals. So, you know, he's, you know, he's going to make sure that, that he gets there. Right. And so we're not deviating. I well, do I just hope that parents, they understand that there now. So I think you just gave some great information right there. I've been preaching it forever about that box, checking off that box and make sure you have it all. So it's almost like the parent, you wake up in the morning, you kick off the cover, you jump out the bed, you go in the room, you get your son and sit down and say, okay, um, you, you, you started last year. You did. You had good film. All right. Okay, let's check your grade. Let me go talk to the guide counselor and pull that transcript. Let's see where you're at right now. Every semester, the parents should be doing that. Then you come back, and you go say, okay, now, I see you leaving the house with your pants under your butt. You got socks and slides on. You're yeah. not doing your hair. You, 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 your eyes are blurry. You, then I check your attendance, and you missed 21 days in school. Uh-oh, that's all part of your character. So your parents, you got to check these out. But if she's not checking the way they're leaving their, their house, not checking the way they're dressed, not checking their attendance, then she can't get mad when these schools don't offer him because she only focuses on the top two or he only focuses on the top two or they only focus on the top two. All the, a lot of parents don't focus on two things. Oh, my son, start. He got a good grade. Okay, what about everything else that come with it? It's more than that, and we're missing the boat, and we're really missing the boat now because of the fact that the parents now are chasing the money. Oh. And, 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 and they are, you know, they're already getting money because that box is worth a couple hundred thousand dollars scholarship, you know, to go to school, but at the same time, they're chasing that. So I want the parents to understand they have to check off the box. I hope them five things work for them. Lo, and let me, you, you brought up a, a piece there that I, I skipped over. But as you mentioned there, the appearance. Hey, when you leave home, like you, you said, you don't know who's watching. You need to look like a million dollars. You need to look like somebody that they say, hey, we want him representing us. Right. I want him representing me. You have to look the part to get the part. Mm. It's, some, uh, you know, so, you know, your appearance, you know, the hair, your, you know, your, your clothes, the way you wear their clothes. I'm not talking about name brand. I'm not talking about how what you spend on those shows, yeah, right. shoes or the jeans or whatever. You wear you wear what you got, but you can wear it with class. You can wear it with pride. You can wear it with dignity. Where people where people um, look at you like you are like you are worth a million dollars. So that that the look piece is is essential. I know, well. man. You always talk about that too. I never forget. I went on seven on seven. Um, tournament. We did a bus tour at the same time, dropped by a couple of colleges. So we got ready. We got down to Georgia, and uh, Kirby Smart was there. And we get to Georgia, and everybody getting off the bus. You know, and I'm right there waiting and watching everybody get off, watching everybody get off. Kid gets mm -hmm. off with socks and slides. I said, get back on the bus. He said, why, coach? I said, you got to put your shoes on. I said, you know, mm -hmm. it's 32 degrees. You know what he told me? I didn't bring any. No. I didn't brought my cleats and my slide and socks. I kept, I said, you need to stay on the bus. Here's the bad part about it. That kid was 6'4". I ain't going to say his name. He went to St. Cloud. He was 6'4", great receiver. He had an offer from Miami Hurricanes already. On the road, he got an offer in the car from Miami. I'm about to let them know he got an offer from Miami to Georgia. Didn't let him, I said, no. And I walked in, and Kirby asked me, where is this kid? I said, coach, he's not ready for his first interview with you. 
He's not ready for the first interview. He's not ready to interview the head coach of Georgia Bulldog because he wasn't properly dressed. His propriety was not on point. Coach mm-hmm. Kirby Smart said, this is the type of tour I like. You the type of person that I like. You the type of person I like bringing the kids through. Your dress code mm-hmm. and their dress code has to match. And a great job on that. So I just can't offer that kid unless he figured out what he wanted to do. Would you agree, Coach? I agree with you 100%. And that's one thing, Lo, why we, one of the reasons why we've been friends all these years, we get it. If we say that this is the bar, this is the bar. We don't let the kid slide up underneath it and say, that's okay, we'll lower the standard for you. We're not gonna look the other way when something is not right. We're gonna, we're gonna hold you accountable to what we said the standard was and what you need to do to be successful. That's exactly. all. Exactly. You know, I, I, just, I always use my kids as an example every time I do talk about anything about propriety and never know who's watching. And I remember my daughter, mm-hmm. we were meeting, uh, me and my daughter was for meet in Indiana, Indiana, Indiana. No, no, we were going to watch my okay. son Low play at Notre Dame. So I told her, she was flying in from college in Pennsylvania, West Florida, and we we're flying in from Orlando. So we met her. I made sure our flight met us up in Atlanta. Then we we're going to fly on up to a Notre Dame. And when she came in, you know, she what she had on, I felt like wasn't appropriate, appropriate for the airport. And, and I said, you need to go change that shirt and take off that thing off your head. And she said, why? I said, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to watch. You can meet the CEO of a company walking through the airport that recognize your professionalism, how you carry yourself, and when I say hello to you. You can meet your husband, your future husband in the airport, going on a business meeting or whatever the case might be. You can meet uh, someone in your profession that you never knew. You can see fellow alumni from your school with West Florida on your shirt. So it's a, even in the airport or wherever you're going, you never know. So we get mm-hmm. on the airplane, I'm sitting down, and then this guy sitting beside me, I have a Notre Dame shirt on. Now she dressed, dressed up, dressed for her propriety. We flying out. The guy said, who's your son? I said, Lowood Jr. He said, wow. He said, I'm down. I live in uh, Lakeland. I'm a, uh, the supervisor. No, I'm the, the director or for a logistic solution company called Saddle Creek. And he said, listen, mm-hmm. when, you're, when Low is done, if he's looking for a job, give me a call. Low graduated Notre Dame. Come home. You no, know, he, he got hurt. He didn't make it to the NFL. I called a guy named Butch Ridgeman. I, and he said, no problem. Send him down here for an interview. Low go down here for an interview. Keep in mind, Low got a degree in TV and film production. This is a logistic solution. Mm-hmm. His first job out of college when University of Notre Dame is from Butch at Logistic Logistic Solution, uh, Saddle Creek. That was named a Saddle Creek Solution. And that was amazing because I was like, wow. I'm glad I every time I got on that plane, I would dress with a polo, with Notre Dame, slacks, shoes, because I was approachable. I was a talk piece. And that talk piece gave my son his first job, you know, making $60,000, $70,000 a year coming out of school. That was amazing for me. So once again, it goes back to the dress code, because you never know who's watching. Your first interview is not at the Georgia Bulldog at the college. It's when the college comes to you. That's your first interview. When they call you out that room, it'd be great to come in with a strong handshake, pants on your hip, and with running shoes or tennis shoes or shoes on your feet. You know, mm-hmm. and that's, a, that's a big key. Sure is. As, and as they say, the slogan goes, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. There it is. Never. There it is. My boys, I say it at my job all the time. You can establish trust in five hours. But you can shatter it in seconds. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. That's oh right. man, hey, you only gonna get this on Listen to Low Show, <laughs> Daryl Perkins, right there, Ball State. Daryl, I want to go here now. The recruiting okay. process. Now, this now it, let's get down to it. Let's stop playing the game and get on time down to it and let them yeah. know uh, what they really want to hear. Okay, the process of recruiting. In volleyball, when they recruited my daughter in volleyball, they had a relationship for three months before they even offered her the scholarship. Three months. Every Mm -hmm. college, every single college. 
She had 12 colleges calling her. When that, when that, that okay. first day, no one would offer her to, to they build a relationship. We did Zoom calls with all the coaches. For months, we got on the phone with the whole team. She had to do a Zoom call with the team. All the girls came in one of the girls' room and had a conversation and asked all these series of questions. <laughs> the girls went back and said, yes, that's, a, that's somebody we want on our team. The girl looked at her YouTube page or Instagram. The, the teammates. So the coach is recruiting you. The teammates are recruiting you. The girls, everybody recruiting you. And when all said and done, they say, yes, we like her. She can play. She a baller. We want her at University of North Carolina Greensboro. She gets there. Sure enough, welcome her with open arms. She ended up playing, starting as a freshman, all, all tournament team. End up, um, just last year, academic, 3.57 GPA. So they did, it worked for her. They picked the right one. They don't pick the right one all the time. Why is that process not like that for football? Why is it, you know, or, or what's your process and what's the right process? Or is there the right process? I asked like three questions just then. <laughs> so you yeah. pick which one you want to go with, D. I tell you what, any time, well, so everybody's in a rush, rush, rush. It's like nowadays it's an arms race because, because of the way that recruiting has changed. You've got the internet, you've got all of the, all of the, 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 the social media websites, everything just gets out there quicker. Everything can happen quicker. A kid can get his film out quicker. And so you can learn about kids quicker. Everything is speeding up. But I still say from that first piece that we talked about, unless you take the time to build that relationship, not just a relationship so I can feel comfortable in signing, but the relationship so you can get to know somebody, it may not end the way that you want it to end, which is the same thing in a marriage. Yes. It takes time. And if you take the time, you'll end up making much fewer mistakes in mm. this process. But everybody wants to go, everybody wants to go fast because it's a competition for that athlete. Male right. or female, don't matter. It's a competition. I got to get in first. When at the end of the day, I still say you build your relationship because if you're build, if you're recruiting a well-rounded person, a person that has taken the time to put everything in that box, then for a lot of kids, I can't say every kid, but for a lot of kids, this scholarship offer is more than just the football piece of it. The degree, the 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 quality of the degree and the education that they're gonna that they're gonna get means something to a lot of kids. Right. Not every kid, but every kid, because they're looking at this thing, not just the football piece, but the degree. Now, when I get my degree, and if I'm able to get into the NFL and I've got all these resources and I've got all this money, do I know how to handle it? Am I prepared to handle this treasure that I've worked for and earned? Can I handle it and then take this and make something with it? If I just get my degree, do I know how to make this degree work with me? So this, what I have got out of coming out of high school, this lasts me for the next 40 to 50 years of my life. Right. And so that, that you know, not being in a race and then on my side of it if we consistently get the right kids in every year then we're going to win our share of games right. and we're going to and it's so it's, it's it's twofold here what's at stake for the athlete and then what's at stake for me and the coaching staff and the university right right so i don't know i don't know if I, 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 for some friend that some reader came in my head double edged sword right there Right. <laughs> yeah, just, there you go. That's right. <laughs> it's that's right. So all day long, right you there. Know, 
But <laughs> I tell you, it's right. And it happened. You know, I said, so when, you know, just like anything else, you're in business, low, you're in a lot of business. You got your hands in a lot of stuff. There. There's a certain way that business has to be done. And when you cut corners in business, you can wind up not being successful. Correct. Correct. You know, you're not, not being successful. So, but to your question, you know, when we like this here to football, why, I mean, why is it, why is it so fast? I, I just think that many times, you know, us as recruiter, hey, I got to get out there. It's competitive. I got to get the offer. My coach wants me to sign here. We, we got, we need this player. We need this skill set, whatever it might be. Then we get in a, in a hurry and then we, we think we have to offer before we've checked, we've done time to check and see if all of the, everything is checked off. The problem with that is, is that in the athlete's mind, they're saying he offered, they're thinking I have a legitimate offer. Mm -hmm. There you go right here. After right. I offer, after I offer, and then now I have to go back and do the work. Can he get into school here? We'll go right back that down that same road. Yeah. The head man is going to ask you, can he get into school here? Is he a good person? Is he going to make this good decisions after he gets here? Is he going to work hard? Is he going to follow the rules? Now you got to go check off all of those boxes. Right. If those boxes are not checked and you don't like the information that you find, now comes the problem. Now comes the dilemma. You're going to tell that kid, well, that offer is not committable. Right. We're not going to bring you on an official visit. Uh, and we can just go on and on and down right. that road. Well, well, I tell you, it's interesting that you say that too. I'll go back to like uh, the process. I remember I sent you the list of all the athletes that I train or have a relationship with. That was a month ago. And mm -hmm. when we, we finally talk, you're doing your spring practice. You call me after spring practice. Okay, Lo, time to go down the list. So you, you know, and, I, and we, as we went down the list, you was like, you already knew. You watched the film. You had already did your research. All right. Now, it was like, what's my thoughts on it? And, mm -hmm. you, and then I, I, I was being honest. I was honest about every last kid. Because like I said, That's your right. name is all you got. I was being honest about it. But you already were doing research. So a lot of stuff that you want to know, you, I, I was able to tell you. And I was, that's what go back to a trainer coach relationship with a college mm -hmm. coach the trust to say okay this kid is great but i know his grades here or this kid got good grades in the film but character might be here i'm keeping it real i'm telling you so it helps that process having uh good the uh guys that you can trust that going to keep it real because they want to make sure that when they put somebody in your your hands and that person commit that that person can get up there and just tear up the place, do everything opposite I said, because now here come Darren next year and say, well, Lo, you gave me two guys, and they were terrible. They didn't work out. You said it was great. I got my notes right here. So I'm just glad that we were able to have that relationship. But my question to you, is that the same type of relationship you're having now with the high school coaches? I'm, I have to ask this, because – High school coaches in Florida don't get paid that much. You know, they're doing it from the love, their heart, and their passion. When they get off work, they go home, their family, and why? They got time to be on the phone like me. I'm on the phone at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, right, doing that other part. And I work all, that's why I work so well with all the coaches. What's the relationship now with the high school coaches? Are they in limbo? Are they, are they confused too? Because they, they see their kids, it's hard to get kids in school. They say a 6'5", 6'2", dog. What's that relationship now? with college coaches and high school coaches. Yeah. I tell you, well, that's a, now that is a double-edged sword there with that question. <laughs> I said, okay. I, hey, hey, you listen I to Lowe, so I got to give it to you. I got to give him something good now. Hey, ask the way you please. And, no, and and that's where that, and, and I don't need to call call names. Here's what I, I tell you. A lot, many of the high school coaches, they're out there. They want to help. They want to help these guys 
get into school. They want to see them get to college and play. They want to see them have an opportunity to go on scholarship, get a degree. Now, the issue, the issue here, we got to talk about a lot of different angles. So more so now since COVID, since COVID, you know, we know that this recruiting has really changed dramatically. When kids got the extra year, they got an extra year of eligibility in college because the COVID year didn't count. Now that at the end of the day, there were less scholarships out there. So because now the guys that, from a college, the guys that I thought were leaving, they didn't leave. Many of them said they're going to NCAA is going to give me an extra year. I'm going to take it. Right. So now that really put a backlog of guys leaving high school into college. I mean, it, it was tough. Right. So now the college coaches, the college coaches moving forward, there's more on their place. So you got that dilemma. Then since then, I'm going to answer your question, Lo, but, I'm, uh, but I got to talk about all these factors that are in play. Uh huh. So since then, that time there, the portal, the portal opened and it has taken off. Okay. The rules, there's many rule changes now that have impacted recruiting. And then bring it all full circle. NIL, NIL has impacted. Right. So high school coach, he's looking at this thing like, okay, I've got a really good player. I've got a really good player who's maybe a power five player. He's now truly in a different category with a kid that's maybe just an, an FBS player, a group of five player or an FCS player. And from the player standpoint, everybody has to understand where they fit in. Unfortunately, every player is not a power five player. We know that. You might be a group of five player. So the, the coach, what I'm seeing, the coach getting frustrated in the recruiting because he's got to put a player in a category. The player might not like where the coach thinks his category is. The parent might not like where the coach thinks his category is. And the process gets, they get worn down in the process low. They get right. worn down in the process. That's, I'm, see, I'm seeing a lot of that. You think that's why high school kids are transferring now because they don't see the, what the coach is saying. The parent don't, don't agree with what the coach is saying. So let's transfer and go to another school. I hate, I mean, on that deal, I was just on a young man on a conversation on the phone with a high school athlete today. And I asked him, I said, now, is this the only high school you've been at? He said, no, coach, I went to school X before. I said, well, that's a good program. They've been successful for several years. I see them in the playoffs nearly every year and they win one or two games in the playoff. He said, he goes, yeah, coach, you're right. But I don't think that coach really helps guys get in positions to where they can get scholarships. That was a real conversation that happened today, wow. straight from the athlete. Wow. That's interesting. You hear that all the time too, but I think I'm glad I like to doing this show and it's for a lot of the athletes. That's, it's not the power five. It may not be the group of five, the ones that just trying to go to school. That's that's playing that's average or there might be an FCS or a D two or something like that. I want them to understand that, your process is different than other processes. And you can't also sit down and just rely on the, uh, the head coach. You have to do your part too. And you have to check off all the five boxes. It going, I, it keep coming back to that magic box. But that mm -hmm. magic box saying, because that magic box, you know, yes, I got film, right? I'm doing great, but I might be at a 1A or 2A school, right? Then I got another, I, right. guess what? Those kids, same size as you, doing the same thing at a 7A or 8A school. Or I'm 5'8", right. and 
I'm dominated. I'm 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 five eight. I'm dominating everybody. I'm dominating every level, everywhere. But I'm five eight. Mm-hmm. So they they not look at them part too, because tools does matter. And like when I mean tools, God given tools, we talking about size. Size right. makes a difference too. So I, mm-hmm. I don't like how they, they're comparing their size to other size. Like I might have a six one, I got a five nine, but we I'm on the right side, he on the left side playing cornerback, but this one right here got ten interception and he got two. Yeah, they probably caught it through to you because you were shorter, and not throwing to him because he was taller. But no one looks at that. They look at film, but they don't understand what the film in detail. They're looking at stats over film. I don't know if they even understand the difference from what film shows and what stats shows. I, I see kids all the time. Mm-hmm. I got all these stats. I got all these stats. Yeah, but you know, you know, you still though your film show you got this interception because the the, the quarterback was terrible. All that That's plays right. a factor in film. Plays a factor. Lo and and like I said, we keep talking about this twenty twenty four. All of the different factors, and the one thing that I'll bring up now is at the end of the day, people got to look at this this college game. Now, like we have free agency in college football with this portal. Right. If if I'm school X and let's say maybe I lost an athlete to the portal or let's say I'm young at this position, we got these guys in here that are old linemen or these guys in here that are linebackers they are going to be great players for us to yet, but they need more time to develop. So I have now a gap this year. So the best way for me to help this football team is to see if I can get an experienced player in the portal at this position. Right. That's real talk. Right. That's real talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that happens. Right. You know? And so, I had to tell a young man to say, hey, what's going on here? It has nothing to do with you, nothing to do what you did or nothing to do with what you did not do. It's just the circumstances that that staff, our staff, whatever, says, hey, for this position here, we thought we were going to be able to go to high school, but because we had an injury or right. whatever it might be, We've got to go and we've got to go get somebody that's already played college football game that's further down the line. I got you. I happens. see that. That's I definitely I see that happen all the time. And I'm and talking to college coaches all over the country. I hear all the time. And not just in Power Five or Group of Five or SBS or FCS. It's mm-hmm. every level has that situation. Even Power Five have that situation. It's, it's interesting. You, got you know, it. you got you got two kids that starters or did you know did great the year before and one decide i'm i know what nah, i'm going to nfl and the other say mm-hmm. well look like i can get more money over here but then i got another kid over here a uh, freshman that never touched the field so mm-hmm. man and we we're not ready because he never got in we had one mm-hmm. of them years that i can't put that freshman in this year he got good practice he got bigger stronger but i don't know if we can totally trust him now you know and back in the day they go ahead and throw that freshman in there Right, like mm-hmm. I remember when Lilo, my son Lo, got his Achilles snap um, the year that Notre Dame went twelve and zero, and he just started the cornerback. They, it wasn't a Porter thing like that, so they had to grab this freshman boy. You better get in there. But nowadays, right. if that happened now, you know what? He, he he's ready, but he's not ready. I might can use me as a third down back or a nickel or something. Let me grab me on Porter. So right. it all changed. That whole process changes right there, and I totally agree with that. But I did want to touch bases on something, Daryl, that we talked about or I talked about a lot is oh, yeah. when I have an athlete and let's talk about the ones that have offers now. And we talk about the different levels. I call it international, national, regional, local. That's how I do my breakdown. So when I yeah. talk to a kid, he said, I said, what is your offers and how many do you have? He said, I got 15 offers. I said, break them down, boy. He said, I got an SEC. I got an ACC. Then I got a bunch of Max and some Ivy Leagues. I said, I want you to look at that now. I want you to look at that, what you have in front of you. You're not an international player because you don't have all the offers in the country. That's an international player. 
Yes. You're not even a national player because you only have one ACC and one SEC. You're not even a national player. Mm-hmm. Now, you're a regional player because you got all the max, right? You have some Georgia State, some Georgia Southern. You got some Akron's and you got a little CS. You know, you have some Southern Conference. You're a regional player right down there, you know, because you threw it in an SEC and ACC to make you be a regional. You're not a local player because you don't have the NAIA, the D2, the D3, them local players. So I broke them down mm-hmm. like that. Now, I asked them, what are you waiting on? Why you don't go ahead and just commit to the SEC offer? It's a great education, a great school. Well, Coach, I'm looking for something different. I may want to try to go to a, a cl- something close like Florida State, UCF. I'm saying to myself, what are you talking about? You, do, I'm confused. The question I asked you was, why you didn't commit to SEC offer that education, and you said it's solid today? You're looking for something else. Mm-hmm. I'm saying to myself, buddy, if you don't jump on this, you now you're gonna now you're gonna run back to the Mac offers where they're gonna soak up in a minute too. They're gonna start grabbing guys in the portal. Now you just went yourself down to D two. The kids nowadays That's they're right. not thinking. Is it that they don't have the right guidance, or is they they're getting told things that that they shouldn't be told, or are they chasing the money? What's your thoughts, Daryl? Mm-hmm. Oh man. I would say, low to your question, it's some of all of the above. It's some of all of the above. You got some, and that's why we got to have our priorities straight. If we, that's the, the the NIL and getting the additional money, that's great. That's great. And I think it's great for the players. I mean, the, 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 the schools, the university, they shouldn't get it all. The players are help bringing this product here, so that money should be shared. I'm for, I'm all for that, but the problem that we have is that if we think that the NIL money overrides playing football and overrides the scholarship, our priorities are out of order. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. The scholarship and playing football is still king, and I say that because. When we look at the guys that are getting NIL, at the end of the day, it's because of what they did on the field. It's no different in the in uh, the professional sports. Those guys that get those endorsements for Coca Cola or, or Dr Pepper right. or Marriott, whatever, it's because of what they done on the field. Their their status helped get them that. So it's the same thing here. You need, instead of make sure that your play matches the pay that you're, that you're speaking. You know, like that. make sure. I like that. Make sure your, make sure your play matches the pay because there's no rewards on the bench. I add that in there. there there's not. <laughs> there, there's no rewards there. Okay? So now we the second thing, a guy has to say, Coach, you put it there, and I don't know if they were listening. If I got one SEC offer and one A and M ACC offer, and then I got, you know, six MAC offers and four AAC offers, that should tell you my the really the majority of my recruiting is with the group of five. Right. Those two power five offers, those are outliers. And you have to really ask then. Go ahead and ask the question. If they're offers and you're really interested, you should ask them, can you commit? Ooh. Uh-oh. Can I come on an official visit? Mm. If if the answer to those questions are no, then those are not offered. You better get focused on those MAC, ACC, and Mountain West offers. We better get focused on those offers because all those offers are telling you what level of player you are and where where people see you. Right. And and, and, and just to piggyback on that too, uh, Daryl, is that I commit to the SEC, or I commit to the ACC, and all of a sudden the portal opened back up in May. Uh-oh. Now I got a kid transferring from Notre Dame. Uh-oh, I got a kid coming out of Alabama. I just seen on the internet the other day, the wide receiver from Florida State. He's, tra- he's coming, he's going in the portal. I got a, I do have a cornerback coming from Notre Dame that's going in the portal. I got a, uh, another kid coming from uh, UMass, not UMass, um, what was, uh, it's a, a, a Stanford, 
come, mm-hmm. going into the portal. Well, my boy from Washington going into the portal. So these guys going into the portal in May, I think that's when it opened back up. So this kid yeah, yeah. who got maybe one AC or one SEC or whatever, and, and trying to wait and wait and wait, forget the waiting. Maybe they need to go ahead and start focusing on something else. I guarantee you, when that portal opened up in May, anybody that got a group of five, a whole bunch of them, and got one ACC or one SEC, that offer is not going to be committable. It's just not. It's impossible unless, I mean, because if he's that guy, he'll have a bunch of SEC, a bunch of ACC, a bunch of Big Ten, or Pac-12, or, or I don't know if Pac-12 is around anymore, but Big 12. He'll have a bunch of them, but he don't. And I'm trying to explain to him the difference. I'm trying to educate all these parents. Look at what you have. Is he an international player? Is he a national player? Is he a regional player? Or he's just a local player? You will know by the offers he got. And if you're a junior in high school right now, finish the year, did everything he can do. He was on his circuit. He went to the camps. He went to the combine. And he still have no offer to this very day at all. Then you already know what group you need to start focusing on. If he's a kid that got Ivy League offers or he have uh, some MAC offers, you know that's the level he's on. It might not be because his ability last year it might be this situation, the school he was at. He could have been at a school that went 0-10, a school that mm-hmm. didn't have a good offensive line, a team that didn't have a good defensive line. He was able to shine. I understand that. But a lot of times that's not the case. That's not the situation. The case is mm-hmm. that you, you, your offers or where you at is what they see and where you're building at. Not saying people can't determine who you are, but in, that, in this case, this is what the college decide. They know what they want. They know what they're looking for. We, at the, the parent, have to understand that this is where your kid need to be at. Let's focus on that. What I mean by right. focus on that too, Daryl, before you ask that is, if I'm going to focus on that, how do I make it happen? How do I take that box and check off the box and see where I'm supposed to be at and start pursuing that, that area? That's what the parent needs to start thinking about. That's what you... Lo, one example I give people, like I say, when I do a home visit, I tell them, hey, this recruiting is a lot like dating. Like the girls that like me, mm-hmm. like the girls that like you. If you do that, you might have a date to the prom. <laughs> if, you, like if you're trying to ask girls that don't look your way or you don't have a phone number to contact them, you'll probably be at home when the prom is going on. Right. So... What am I saying? Like the schools that like you. If I'm getting a lot of contact, text, and tweets, and phone calls, and emails, and letters from these group of five schools, I should get in love with those group of five schools. But, but the, the ones that are inviting me on official visits, the ones that are inviting me mm, come unofficial. Those schools there, that's who I should get interested in. Right, and but there, but there, if I get questions. in, and it's a, it's a two, and it's a two way street. If they're interested in me, but I don't show any interest back, they're gonna move on to the next people. There it is. There it is. They offer. They there told you they're interested. Well, you need to see about getting to their campus instead of going to that other campus for unofficially or going to the other school for a camp. They didn't invite you. You're just going there because you're thinking I can go there and get noticed and recognized. Correct. So but when you show up there, they're not looking for you. But if you go to those other places, they're looking for you when you get there and they're going to monitor you. They're going to evaluate you. Correct. They're going to show you the love. That's where you need to be at. Right. I totally agree with that. I talk about this all the time, how, you know, you, you, you have an offer from, this group of five, you know, the MAC conference, the, the AAC, you have an offer from that or you have an offer from the HBCU, well, and, but you don't have an offer from the bigger school. Well, let's go. I, let's go to them school. If That's they right. offered me or they talking to me all the time, if, if they texting me, tweeting me, DMing me, posting me, doing graphics, all the stuff they're doing, they haven't offered me yet, I still might need to go to that school because they're showing me that strong interest. They probably mm-hmm. wait for me to show the interest back. So let me go visit that school. But why am I visiting a school that I that's not even interested in me? You're not, not on even, the radar. 
Uh, hey, here go a junior day. Come to my junior day. Why? Why you want me, me and my mom, my parents, or my whoever to spend all this money to come to a school? You're not even really interested in me. Do your homework. Look at the roster. How many tailbacks they got? How many uh, fullbacks they got? They don't do fullbacks no more, but how many quarterbacks they got? How many receivers they got? How many coming back? Do your homework. So, yeah, you might have that dream to go to the school and love that school, but that school might not have the love for you. So why chase it? Don't chase the money. Why well, tell them, guy, stop chasing it. No, he don't, 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 don't chase. Go where the money is able, to, where you able to attain. If I can attain that money, right? If it's tameable, that's where I'm gonna go get the money because you no, know why? They, 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 they lure me in. They're talking to me. They open the door for me. And I tell them that's where we need to go. I like like going on these tour, the bus tour. That's great. I like bus tour, but I, I don't need to go to a bus tour. To all the power five school, when I'm five eight, I'm five nine. I run a four six. I don't run a four four. They haven't been contacting me. Haven't been calling me. They ain't even following me on Twitter or nothing. I mean, I don't. I just trying to guide the parents in the right way to say, make sure you go like you said where they want you. That's right. That's that's it's very simple. That's exactly you go where 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 you want it, and then where people are saying, we want to make an investment in you. As we mentioned, a lot of those schools that I coached at in the Northeast were UConn and ACC Maryland. Those schools, there are sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year to go to. So if you're there for five years and it's $60,000, that's $300,000. Yes. Where are you going to get that? Somebody's telling you, hey, we want to invest $300,000 in you. Why are we running the other direction? Right, right, right. And if it's you, there, I mean, all your years, I mean, I've been knowing you, you didn't just produce men. You produce football players. You produce husbands. You produce um, coaches, guys who went out and started coaching. And not only that there, you actually at UConn. Now, remember UConn, you shocked the world. You had, what, three boys that get drafted in the first and the second round, if I'm right on that. That's right. That's right. Right. So, so now you built you built the relationship with them. They come to the school. Now they get coached up. Now I know people don't say they say don't commit to the school because of the coach, right? That I, I hear that a lot of time. Commit mm-hmm. to the school because there's a it's a good school, it's a good opportunity, it's a good education. It might even be a commit to a school where you know after that your four year you want to live up there. I mean, I got guys that like my like Ha Clinton Dix. He lives in Alabama. You know, mm-hmm. he went back to Alabama. He loved it. You know, he got a family up there. You know, I, that was great. I'm talking to Darryl Monroe last week. He was saying, maybe I should have stayed at Washington State up there. Maybe my career path would have been different, you know, when I got out of college. So they also got to look at that part, too. Am I willing to live up here and, and, and get uh, have a network and a relationship with People in Ball State or in UConn, I'm using all the group of five now, or in Ohio, or Akron, places like that, so that they can have an opportunity to have a career up there. Because, oh, I remember you. You played at Ball State. I remember you. You played at Akron. You played at Marshall. Yeah, let's get him a job. Let's bring him in. Because mm-hmm. when you take them degrees and you come back home, you fight Florida State, Florida Gators, Miami, USF. That's part of the whole recruiting process also. And, and I did hear that a lot of times the group of five ed, uh, education sometimes is better than some of the bigger schools. I mean, I did my homework now. The graduation rate of some of these smaller schools are better than some of the bigger schools. No question. No question. I mean, right. why? Because you can get classes are smaller. You're not just a number. Mm-hmm. You can get, you get hands-on hands-on education learning you get a chance to know people and you're and then when the class size is smaller like that you're learning and your opportunity to to grow and do things is is much more i mean yeah. it's it's just much more i tell you, you know there are, you know we're going to start wrapping it up but I'm, i want to just touch base on this last part which is very yeah. very crucial right now in the recruiting world I want everyone to hear on the Listen to Low show. They say, mm-hmm. go to, they say now with the NIL, the portal, that kids that normally go to a bigger school, or, I'm, let, me, let me rephrase that, 
if you want to go to a bigger school, but that you don't have the bigger offers, or you need to go to a junior college. Now, junior college is almost on raise the bar because NAIA, D3, D2 is almost becoming like junior colleges. Well, let me go to these schools and transfer up to the group of five. Then I get to the group of five, now I'm going to transfer up to the power five if I'm able to. Let me go to a small school, go to a big school. And the reason I know it's true because I had a kid that did the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. He went to a D2, ended up going to Rhode Island, now he had a bigger school. So is that the case now where kids have to settle now? Or do they just go to a, a, a group of five and just be happy and have a career and play football and don't worry about the money? Yeah. If it if it's my if it's my son one day, you know, and who knows what recruiting will look like at that point there, five years down the road. But the first thing that when you ask that question, the first thing I say to this here, and I and I say this to the athlete, we spent this time talking about this recruiting and the offers. Lo, it's tough enough trying to get one committable offer. I know guys say, hey, I had 20 and all this stuff here. I had 15 or whatever. But at the end of the day, the question we have to ask ourselves, how many of them were committable? But my first statement there again was, it's tough enough to get one committable offer. Right. Now we sit there and say, well, okay, I'm going to get there. And I'm, and now because of I want more money or I want more playing time, or I'm not happy with this coach, I say, I'm gonna walk away from this scholarship and now go try to get a second one. Now, we have not talked about that this evening so far, but we need to also talk about the reality of this portal is that there are a lot of guys that have went in that portal low and never come out. Wow, so what do they do? What do they then? What do they do? Because they, after that semester, they done with, your, they, your scholarship is over. They just come home and get a job? They're at home. You're at, you're at home. You're at home. And with mom and dad, now you're trying to figure out how I'm going to get back in school. How am I going to get a chance to get my degree? How am I going to get a chance to play football again? We've got to be careful about that because, Lo, when we talked about it again, we keep going back to that box. <laughs> One of the things we talked about in that box was work ethic. So all of a sudden, if I'm just leaving because I want to get more money, what am I going to say? Work. If I'm going to say, hey, I'm leaving because I don't like where I'm at on the depth chart, I'm going to say, roll up your sleeves and go to work. You mentioned it, Lo. If you're just working from three to five when the coach says he's having practice, and you don't come in early and you don't stay late and you don't watch any extra film, how are you creating an advantage to get yourself where you want to go? You talked about it at the beginning. We did the corn. We did the cucumbers. We did all of that mm-hmm. so that we could work and outwork so we could have what we needed. Right. There's not that. I don't hear that message a lot, Lo. Right. Well, no, well, I'll tell you one thing. That message you just said, I heard it all my life. And that, that what I that mean is, it's not going to change. Yeah, money's out there and, and all that, but when all said and done, what's authentic, always going to mm-hmm. win. It's even in the Bible right. by being authentic or following an image. You don't follow an image. You follow what's authentic. And what's authentic is mm-hmm. hard work will be rewarded. That's, right. That's what's authentic. It's not going to change. The, the boxes have to check off. That's authentic. That was like that. When I came out of school, when my son came out of school, my daughter came out of school, it was the exact same thing when it comes down to hard work. And then now it's always mm-hmm. uh, that, that, that fight where do I just want somebody to give me something or do I want to just earn it? Nothing is given. Everything mm-hmm. is earned. And, and that's what's going to happen. And I hope everybody listening that if you don't work and get it done, when you go in that portal, it might not come out, but if you do That's come right. out, it won't. It won't. It's gonna be at home 
back at home with mom and daddy in and get a job working at a McDonald's or somewhere else or trying to make it happen. Unless you have got a family that can add up, that can support and pay that payment for you to go to college or Hey, do what they said back in the day, which is authentic. You go to college or you go to the military. Cause the military can get you an education for free. They can get you a house. They can do it all. And I'm telling you, I won't be surprised in the next three to four, five years that there'll be more guys sign up for military because they got in the port and made a bad choice, or they would chase the money instead of hard work to get what you get, or they were just they being selfish or not listening and end up in a place that they never thought they'd be. And then now the answer is how do I get out now? The cost of living is tough. Mom and dad mm-hmm. you know, had a dream for you. You had a dream, but we all came back to the NFL as a dream, a cause of great reality. But what's the other answer? What's the other alternative? I think the next person I'm going to bring on listen low is uh, somebody from the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and and what is, what's one more? Marines. Marines. I think I'm going to bring them for you here and start telling about the benefits of going there because that's seen the way if they're going to push us. If that's where they're pushing us to, Right? They're pushing us mm-hmm. out of football into military because military is nothing to sign up for military. I ain't got nothing against military. My son went right. to the military after he didn't want to play school, caught, caught the football no more, went to the military, number one in the platoon, outran everybody. Out of 600 score, he got 599, number one wow. in the platoon, and top five in the country. Hey, mm-hmm. he won all these gun awards and shooting awards, and he's living. Got a paycheck. Don't ask me for no more money. Got to own this place up in Texas. Hey, there you go. Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. So, God. Life is good. Life is good. So, it's up to you. You're in control of your own destiny when all said and done. Daryl, it was great having you on episode five on the Listen to Low show brought to you by Sweet Fried Production. I'm so excited for the information that you gained the nuggets that you gave to the families. I hope they take heed of it. I hope they take knowledge of it. hope they listen to everything you said. Play it back. I'm telling you, this here is what they need to know, that if you don't check off the box, you That's might right. still be in a box. Guys, you listen to Low Episode 5 once again, and we're so excited uh, about the show and what we've been doing and where we're going at next week. Episode 6 is coming up. We want you to make sure you click we want you to subscribe at our YouTube page, Camp King, K for Kids, 1-2. Follow us at salespeed.com. And make sure you be proud about the victory that you won because the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Thank you. See you guys next week.